Welcome back to a little black flag. Fine prize, Captain. We just got done taking a ship and looting it of its goods. And uh, we're just still kind of waiting um, and uh, doing some things while we wait for two weeks to pass till we go and see uh, Captain Kid, and I think we'll stop here, see what we can do. Looks like there's a variety of things that we can get accomplished here, and a Templar hunt as well, so uh, I think that is what we're going to do. We're gonna see what those Templar hunts are about, and as Kid said, maybe do them the favor of telling them that there are Templars after them. And there's our assassin waiting patiently for us. Opia? Oh, easy, milady. Just thought you might like some help. Why? What is your real motive? Your name was on a map. I may have sold it to a nest of Templars in error. We all make mistakes. Oh, typical. Twist a Templar blade to our back to play safer to our face. Look, I'll level with you, lass. I'm also looking for a key. I figure I help you. You let me keep the key if it turns up. Right. You're offended. I'll go. We will challenge you to a hunting contest. Gather more skins than us, and you win. Easy. Let's go. Who's us? It was just her. All right. Let's uh, see what we can do. There's something. Let's get it. I don't know, I don't... Oh, she's already got one. Quick. <laughs> Probably just... I mean, it's a small island. It's You can't scare them too far. Alright, one and one. We're nice and tied up. Is there like a time limit? What What's going on here? There's nothing on this side of the island. I figured that my gunshot would scare everything to this side. There we go. That's not fair. What? Consider it motivating. Ah, I should have pushed her. She takes her time skinning them. But uh, she is ahead of us. So. Come on, there's gotta be something. I'm starting to think the exact same thing. Oh my gosh, she's like on the other side of the island. You gotta be kidding me. Alright, finally. I'm glad that Edward here is a great shot. And she's already at three. Yes, thank you for telling me about the pouch. Um, it's even calling out these white like, animals for us. Like, dude, let's go. It's like the luck of the draw over here. I just got the short end of the stick. Oh, okay, what was that? Um, come on. Why do I keep coming over here at all? Alright, there you are. Even like just past that. Done. Alright, she didn't get four. Alright, we happen to be in the lead. Oh gosh. Oh, what the heck? You're going down, dude. Okay, maybe not. Oh gosh, we are almost dead. 
One more. We have to make this right. Oh, good for us. Good for you, Edward. The white jaguar. A fine catch. You have more than proven yourself. We accept your help. With what? Look. Frigate. Why? Is there anything out there but fish? No. Those are your Templars. You have a ship and a pale face, vessel and passport. Meet us at Grand Cayman to help us investigate. All right, um, but I think before we do anything else, we'll finish looting the island of everything it can, including the skin we missed out on. And right next to that is a treasure chest, a uh, treasure map, sorry. Yeah, cool. And a message in a bottle. see what this guy's got to say today number 14 the assassin lost as I was in my reveries I failed to see the envelope slipped neath the door to my bedchamber it read thus dear sir forgive the alarm I must have raised with my queries but you have the exact likeness of a man my colleagues and I have longed to meet. Allow me an audience and I will explain all. Your friend. Loreno Torres. I pondered this letter for some time that evening, wondering what it could mean that I had the exact likeness of a man he knew and why it should raise so much intrigue. I wondered at this for hours, pacing about the room with a mind to slip from my chamber, when of a sudden I heard a rapid succession of reports from pistols and rifles outside in the garden to my ear sounded as if a war had begun with me a bystander at the center I dropped to my knees and hid on the far side of my bed away from the window I shut my eyes but as I did this, a voice called out to me from my chamber door. Mr. Kavanaugh, it said. I raised my head and opened my eyes and saw a figure cutting a terrible outline, hooded and robed in sienna. The man lifted a small pipe to his lips and blue. I felt a sting upon my neck as if from a mosquito. I opened my mouth to protest, but thereupon a wave of fatigue took me and I fell fast asleep. Sounds like he got sleep darted. We know about those from the other games. Next up, we can learn about some people. Uh, people being Opia Apito, born around 1695 and died unknown. But she was born in Cuba. The Assassin Bureau leader, Opia Apito, was raised Teano among her mother's people, never knowing her father, who was a Spaniard. At 12, her village was raised by the Spanish. 
Most of her community was kidnapped or killed, but Opia, the lone free survivor, fought and ran. She survived in hiding for close to a decade. Much of what we know of Opia is inseparable from legend. Her name, probably self-given, is an amalgam of the Teano words for eternity and ghost. She claimed to be a direct descendant of the warrior Hatui, who stood against the Spanish in the 16th century. She was guided throughout her life by the mantra Ai Ea Bom, if I pronounced that correctly, better dead than a slave. In her early 20s, she was hired by the assassins as a guide and was soon adopted into their ranks. She delighted in a characteristic Diano uh, approach to strategy, preferring to harm the enemy by taking something from him in battle that he might live to notice it missing. But as an assassin, she did not shrink from violence. True to her name, once promoted to Assassin Bureau leader, she built an agile and highly effective ghost bureau near the Cayman Islands with virtually no physical footprint to speak of. We might regard it today as an early example of a terrorist cell, but she left no records and no descendants. And until now, history has held no record of it. I also found speculation that her father was the adventurer Alejandro Marquez, which would have made her a sister of Lucia Marquez, signed JM. Can we verify that? And what about the Hatui connection ML? Almost none of this is verifiable. Half the books report the Tayano as extinct by this time, but their present-day descendants beg to differ. J.M. Alright, we can move on from that one and head to another uh, Templar hunt. Now that we're here, we see that our person that we're going to talk to is standing on the dock. Oh, and it happens to be Opia again. Opia. And how are we today? Surprised. We did not think you would keep your word. Tell us, why do you expect to find your magic key here? It holds an irresistible attraction to Templar, if that is who bought these ships. We don't know what the Templars could find here. These people lead simple fishing lives. Or perhaps not so simple. I'll go and have a mingle. See what we can find out. Alright. I suppose we should head on over. Before we do, we ended up going shopping, but we locate our targets quickly. Our old catch? You must have made a fortune. I did. But you know, this is exactly why they call me the King of Fishing. Who calls you that? Oh, don't you jealous? Jealous? I'm not jealous. Well, I love and believe. I'll show you the bill of sale if you like. Out for the van. Friends, He's off. fire and beatings and all manner of infamy. Get the price they ask is beyond us. I'll show you the bill of sale if you like. Senorita Marquez's right-hand man, Vargas, signed it himself. She's using his home as her headquarters. I even met her there when I delivered the fish. You see, Alvin is practically nobility now. <laughs> A noble fisherman, indeed. The bully boys do great disservice to Alvin. Just the other day, Edmund... Okay. He walked a little quick. 
And he looked right at me. Alright, let's head on back. Were you successful? I kept overhearing this name. Marquez. <gasps> Friend of yours? Her name matches that of the man who destroyed our village. We fought and lost, but the leader did not live to enjoy his victory. You think this woman is related? If she is, we are not safe. The bill of sale we stole gives the address of a man in her employ. Vargas. I saw. I know where it is. Let's pay the bait boy a visit. Find out what he knows. Follow us. You must try to understand what it is at stake. I've got some idea. No. It's more than your key. There are those who say the Taino are already extinct. We will never be extinguished. Our fight continues. Here it is. The home of Pargas. Hide. We'll use the element of surprise to our advantage. Conceal yourself. Right there. Take position. Hola! State your business. I hope for an audience with Senorita Marquez. Chase him! <clears throat> if I wasn't hiding... I could have probably caught him already. He's fast. Is he gonna get on that ship? Dude, don't you dare get on that ship. We're almost like fully upgraded on this ship over here, so... Yeah, we should have no real problems catching him. I have 19 grand, and I can't afford to uh, make this ship look He's nice again. Away. He's not getting away. Get away. Um, we just have those boards nailed up on the outside. Like, come on. There we go. You're gonna broadside us. Okay, your choice. Okay, okay. Dude, calm down. Out with it, lad. Where's Marquez? Why is she here? She's already left for Juvenile Jude. Find her there if you must. Her army will teach you a lesson. Who went to this island of our enemies? If Lucia Marquez has gone there, it is certain we are her target. How many enemies do you have? When you're hunted, it sometimes seems that every stranger is an enemy. On Juventud, we have been a true since the death of the first Marcus, but this woman could reignite our dispute if her price is high enough. Ah, can't have that. I take this ship. Meet me there if you still want your key. I think it's fine that she takes the ship. How are you gonna sail it if it's just you? Is my question. Alright, the next island we get to here. We immediately have a little Mayan ruin, or pillar. Hmm. I think it goes this way. Perfect. I do believe X marks the spot. So we can go and get that. Just a little kick of the dirt, pulling up a rock, and there's something. Surprised it wasn't dug up before. Ah, another Mayan keystone. 
Yes, I do wonder what these are all about. Anyways, here she is. Let's talk to her. It has been a lifetime since we were here. This jungle is still thick with vines and trickery. Marcus will use this to her advantage. But we know she's here. She doesn't expect us. We must find her. Draw her out and put a final end to her. Let's see where this lad goes. Okay, so we just need to tail the soldier without him seeing us. Shouldn't be too hard in this nice open area. Uh, but he actually does walk for quite a while, so we're going to skip that to his destination, which is hereabouts. Must be hiding. Let's take some action she can't ignore. Yes. Eliminate this man. Yeah, in hindsight, maybe I should have blown them up. Now we're in the middle of it. Why would you be here talking to all your buddies when there's all this explosives nearby? I guess they could have been trading it or something. A little, little deal going down. Oh my gosh, so many of them. And she's like, dude, take them out! Good thing for smoke bombs. Uh, it wore off, apparently. You don't need help. You're probably one of the only characters that I've ever seen not lose any health. You're doing phenomenally. That's a word. Lucia Marquez! If it's Okay. Sure. I think she knows about me. Um What's with the Wii talk? Oh, she sailed that ship with her imaginary friends. She lost health now. You're going down. Oh, after I go down. It's hard to see anything here. No. I cannot die at the ends of the Taino. My father saw such potential in this islands. Gold. Industry. Freedom. All of it squandered. You have not a clue how to use it. He could have brought you wealth. You believe we wasted freedom of being free? You die a prisoner of your Templar moors. Let's not argue with a dead woman. <clears throat> Here's my prize. Well, it worked out for Edward. He got his key. Staying on the island, we can find a treasure map. This is more like it. head over to another Mayan uh, ruin. First we are gonna synchronize and look at this little ruin we got. And here we are. have to be something more permanent. These aren't terrible, but still, after time, that's gonna, what, sink into the ground? Probably not after too long. 
couple of years, I mean, you know, we we'll call it 20 years, and that one that fall over, fell over, sorry, um, that would have been, I don't know, you might not even see it. Good. Another keystone. Yes, another keystone. Next, I think we can learn a little bit about our friend we just murdered. Where are ya? There she is. She was born, Lucia Marquez was born in 1689 and died in 1715. Born in Spain, Lucia never knew her father. Possibly the explorer Alejandro de Ortega, DM. By the age of 12, she was supporting herself and her sisters on the streets, begging, borrowing, and stealing anything she could, all the while developing the skills of a master thief. At the age of 17, she was caught stealing a horse belonging to a high-ranking Templar and wisely opted for training over jail time. The Templar life gave Marquez the focus she needed, and she never found herself at a lack of challenge or adventure. She died at the age of 26 on Pino Island, wise beyond her years, on the order of Opia Abito. Note, you'd think after failing to steal a horse, a Master Templar wouldn't be... So impressed, DM. Guess he or she was saw potential in the grasshopper, RL. Maybe she or he just didn't like that horse, JM. Heartwarming origin story. Aren't we all about second chances at Abstergo Entertainment, ML? Alright, um, the island that we're on, or Mayan ruins, I guess, in general can be found throughout the Yucatan Peninsula and Central America. The uh, This large civilization flourished from 250 to 900 AD. Note, this is one of the civilizations that just disappeared for no reason, RL. Well, they're still around. There are plenty of Mayans in that part of the world with their own culture. But yeah... The thriving civilization collapsed around a thousand years ago. People say it had to do with drought, but I don't think there's general agreement what exactly happened. DM. Next, we can learn about jaguars, specifically the black jaguar. In the Americas, the term black panther generally refers to a melanistic jaguar. They are not a separate species, but a color morph of the spotted form. Black jaguars form less than 10% of jaguars. That's interesting. Next, we find ourselves on a separate island. And we have ourselves a message in a bottle. This time we get message 15. Rest and repaste? Question mark? I awoke some days hence in a bustling native village in the presence of that same man many leagues from where I had called my home. A native himself, with a strong and serious but gentle face, he named himself Balaam, and bade me not be frightened. Strangely, I was not, for his demeanor was calm and his words were kind. I asked him why he had brought me to this place. He, his surprise seemed genuine, and he told me, You are a sage. Your face tells it plain, your eyes most of all. I did not know what to make of this suggestion. He went on, you are but one of a long lineage of identical men, men born outside their original time. Your likeness and your soul are a pattern. 
repeated throughout the ages. Oftentimes, a century or more passes without the appearance of a sage. Other times, two are born in the same decade. We know not why. And dash my brains. But all he spoke was known to me in some intrinsic way. And yet it frightened me all the same. How could it be that I was a man reborn? How could it be that I had already lived one life and had plotted through a second, still pondering the first? I spent many a day with this man, Balaam, and in that time he told me all he knew, then asked questions of his own he hoped I might answer. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, questions that I guess we've either read already or we just don't get a read. <laughs> Next up, we find ourselves on another island where, again, we find another message. This time, it's number seven, leaving home. It pains me now to think on my feelings of my departure from Boston and from my dear parents who raised me so well for in hindsight I think perhaps I should have been melancholy or anxious at the least yet leaving home at so spry an age ranks as one of the great joys of my life never before or since did I feel such an embrace of freedom? Yet not all concerning my leaving was joyous, uh, as it was around this time that the voices came upon me strong, much like a man whispering in my ears. These voices were neither sinister in nature, nor did they prevent mature dealings with my fellow man. But unlike my reveries, which came to me in my sleep or in daydreams, these voices came upon me at times inconvenient to my present purpose. Day and night they intruded without provocation. And though they were not constant, they were certainly frequent in nature, and strangest of all had the qualities of memories. There were times, too, that I seemed to hear my own voice among them. Was it possible I heard conversations from a previous life? Memories of those I knew? Memories of engagements long past? In the next letter, I shall relate what were perhaps the most confounding snatches of conversation. Next up, we find ourselves at a plantation where we already retrieved the key and got a 750 real bonus for not ringing any bells. Well, you know, for the bad guys not ringing any bells. Next, we find ourselves at another Mayan uh, pillar. Boom. We get our prize. And after that, you guessed it, another message. This time it's 18, my search. After leaving Balam, I set out in a sloop of my own and traveled for nigh on one year about the West Indies, sailing with a small crew to all manner of jungles and playas and beaches, looking for a sign or a landform that might spark in me a memory. Along my way, I met many a fine people who did me great kindness, 
and offered work in exchange for more provisions. In this way, I came to know the people of the new world and of the old, and found in all of them the same hopes and desires. To travel is truly the finest education. I agree with that. I love traveling. And you do learn a lot about people and things and just everything. It's great. Then, after my 13th month aroven, I found my object well inland on a known island. Here it was. The place Balam had called the observatory. Oh, what memories the location aroused. Well, prior to clapping eyes upon its structure, I knew I had come to the correct spot. Leaving my men on shore, I passed alone through the jungle and deep ravines, coming at last upon the spot, and there marveled at its strange and foreboding presence. Without prompt, I knew what to do. I pressed my fingers into what I knew to be a portal, and upon its opening I passed inside. What I saw there, however, shall remain a mystery, for the world is not yet ready to hear my tales, which should sound like sorcery to all but my friend Balaam and perhaps the Templars who likely chase me still. Next up, we can hit up one of these Mayan columns. I don't know if the tree is a great uh, thing to use for this, but I guess we're going to use it anyways. Come on. Right there. We got it. As we're sailing along, we get a database entry for Castillo Moro, built in 1589 to protect Havana's Bay from pirates and foreign invaders. The Castillo de los Tres Reyes Magos del Moro is an imposingly solid structure. Its mere presence put a stop to any raids on the city of Havana until the British invaded during the War of Jenkins' Ear uh, in 1762. Note, this is this has everything we need. It was already over a hundred years old by the time of our virtual experience Perfect. Spare no expense in recreation by Oliver Gagné. And there that is. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty solid looking structure back there. But, anyways, we're sailing on here. And after sailing for a while, we finally make our way over to the island where we're going to meet Captain Kidd. I'd like to thank anybody who made it this far for watching. It's a little shorter this episode, but we'll start right off uh, here where we're going to meet Captain Kidd.